What's up, guys? Welcome to another Joy of the Trade educational piece, if you will. Today, I want to take you guys on a little bit of a deeper dive into Kathy Wood's ARC Holdings ETF. For those of you that don't know ARC, it's been the high flyer, high growth ETF poster child, and she's the guru of all the high flying stocks after she bought up a lot, a boatload of Tesla. Kudos to her. I'm, I, I have tremendous respect for what she does. But I want to show you guys how I look at ETFs, how I take a deep dive and show you the tools that I have here on my Bloomberg to evaluate these things. So let me share my screen and we'll look at ARC. All right. So the first thing always we're going to do is we're going to look at a chart, of course. So let's start with, let's start with what's, what's happening with this thing here. So this, this, this bad boy ran from, let's say, let's look back all the way to, well, everything has exploded since the, the COVID, but this thing quadrupled, I think. If we look, if my, if my back of the napkin math is correct, let's do a quick, let's be exact. There's no reason to, to guess. Uh, there it is, wait. 360%. Three hundred for sixty percent from March low to the recent high. Okay, and we've come off since then. We plunged thirty percent from the high, and now we've rebounded to about down twenty percent. Okay, so that's crazy action. These are huge moves. But those of you guys that follow me know that I like to talk about proportional pullbacks. What do I mean by proportion proportional pull, pullbacks? If we look at from low to high on a uh, Fibonacci retracement. And this thing's trading around 126 pre-market here. I'm filming this. It's gonna be a, an arc down day as rates are up. If this thing comes to a 50% retracement, it should be a $96 stock. So we'll look at another 30% downside, just do a 50% retracement from March low to high. Okay, fine. That's fun with charts. So just know that if you buy it here, you could experience another 30% there real quick and the chart would still be normal. It would still be intact. That would be a place that it could bounce. That would be a place that, that it could bounce. Uh, on the upside, it probably has around 135 level, 138 here, this level here to test before it breaks through. But those of you are like, okay, why do I care? What am I looking at here with ARC? Let me show you. So this is an ETF, right? ETFs are like mutual funds that trade on exchanges. They're priced every day. And this thing is, hold on, let's go back. I want to show you something important here. This thing has a $25 billion market cap, $25 billion. That's huge. That is huge. And if we look at this, watch this. Look at the shares outstanding on this thing. This is something I always like to. I always like to look underneath the hood and see what is exactly in these ETFs. So we got 23% internet, 15.7% biotech, 15% software, autos, interest of Tesla is probably all of it. 78% US, so it's US centric, right? But look at this. This is, this is the shares outstanding. So what happens is people start to, to hear that this Kathy Wood's kicking ass. They want to buy this ARC ETF. So they all start getting allocated into this at like big Merrill Lynch's, et cetera, right? So then you see the shares outstanding go from last September, they've doubled from 89 million shares all the way up here to 192, okay? And so, and if we go back to last March, they've tripled. So every time that these, these shares get created, new people want to get into this thing, Kathy Wood has to go out and she has to buy she has to buy all these stocks. Now let's look at the stocks that she has to buy. So she, through this fund, has been a passive bid in the market for all these high flyers. Now let's look at these high flyers. What does she hold? 10.5% of her flood is a Tesla, which is massive, right? Then she has, she has Square. Then she has Roku. So this is the, the net of the fund. And this is the value, 2.6 billion, 1.5 billion, Roku, 1.3 billion, right? But this is interesting. I get to see, and this is another thing that I love about having this Bloomberg. I mean, those of you that don't have Bloomberg, you should subscribe to a guru who has it. <laughs> Anyways, Tesla, okay? She has got 3.68 million as of yesterday's close. So this is updating for me every night, all right? 
and I get to see how she's changed her position. So she, she grew her position in Zillow. She grew her position in Spotify. She took it down in CRISPR. She took it down in NVTA and so on and so forth. But you can see the, the, big, the big position changes that, that you can, I can rank them on position changes here. And then I can rank it on what she sold the most. And so she got out of, she looks like she's selling a lot of biotechs. She's selling a good amount of biotechs. But anyway, something to pay attention to because this woman is really driving returns in the market, both up and down. She's make, her fund actually makes me nervous because if you look at the real distribution days, the real bad days, they're concentrated in a lot of the stocks that she has. So we have to keep an eye on Kathy's, Kathy's returns. We have to keep an eye on what her fund is doing because that is driving a lot of the volatility in the market. Hope you guys liked what I, I showed you today. If you're not following me, check out joyofthetrade.com. If you haven't subscribed to Wealth Press and you're looking at us on YouTube right now, like this video and subscribe today. We put out a lot of these cool videos. So LFG guys, I'll be back.